Statenland. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the National Intel Report. I'm your host, John Statenler. On this Tuesday, oh, if it's Tuesday, we have a special treat for you today. Uh, aside from Bob Chapman, international forecaster, Robbie Noel from the flip side, which, by the way, follows this program on the network, 6 to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and that's Central Time, of course. And we brought people like Peter Schiff and uh, Gerald Salente on the program. And today, uh, Stephen Lenman, um, that does a program on this network, Monday through Friday, from 10 to 11 p. Yeah, a.m. I almost said p.m. a.m. Uh, Global Research Hour. Stephen had a gentleman on today by the name of Fred Magdoff. And uh, the book that he co-authored, Global Crisis, The Great Financial Crisis, subtitled Cause and Consequences. Folks, this program deals with financial matters. What matters to people right now is where are we going, and it's not looking real, real good. So we'll have him on for the first hour, joining the team of Robbie Noel, Bob Chapman, and John Statmiller. And... Uh, that would be a good mix. By the way, the co-author on this book also is John Bellamy Foster. And uh, uh, this should prove to be interesting, ladies and gentlemen. We're about telling you the facts and the supporting information so you know. <laughs> you don't know anything if you're watching the mainstream snooze out there. That's for sure. But you can hear it here on the National Intel Report Special Edition on Tuesdays. So we'll roll around with that one. And also, and thanks, Quince, for this. I appreciate it if you're listening out there. Uh, on tomorrow's National Intel Report, I'm going to have Dr. Um, and this guy, we're going we're gonna to find out what implanting democracy or revitalization or nation-building has done to Afghanistan. And I'm catching uh, Dr. Mohammed Meraki. Uh, the day before he goes back to Afghanistan. So we'll give you an update on that. Remember, uh, we rolled some troops out of Iraq, rolled them to Afghanistan, and, well, Barry, I remember Bar Barry Sartoro saying that, uh, oh, no, when I get elected president, we're going to pull the troops out of Iraq. And two years ago, what did the Democrats say? Yes, we're going to put an end to that war. No, we're not. Folks, the very same people who are pulling George Bush's strings are pulling Barky strings as well. Now, sad to say, but that is the plain and honest truth. And it's really sad of all, and, and we're used to the campaign promises, presidential election style, but this is over the top. Trillions of dollars running out of the Treasury. And what is the return for America? Hyperinflation, no jobs, no nothing. So we'll get into this in just a couple of minutes with Fred Magdoff, Bob Chapman, Robbie Noel, and your mo most humble. I'm glad to have all these people with us today. Well, part-time humble host, John Statman. We'll kick this off in three. We'll be right back. Get ready for Real Talk Radio. You're listening to the National Intel Report with your host, John Statmiller. And we are all here on this special edition of the National Intel Report. Uh, Robert Chapman, are you there, sir? No, I'm not here, but I am. <laughs> Mr. Noel, <laughs> out in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, excuse the noise in the background. It's the air conditioning. Ah, it's actually warm enough out there. They actually have air conditioning there? <laughs> <laughs> and I have also, gentlemen, uh, and I heard this man on uh, Stephen Lenman's program today, the uh, Global Research Hour. Uh, we have with us uh, for this hour Fred Magdoff. Uh, Mr. Magnoff, are you there, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Uh, if you would, sir, uh, give your pedigree, uh, your Professor Emeritus, uh, if you would. I didn't have time to pull your bio. Uh, so if you would, please, sir, let the listeners know who you are. 
I uh, am a professor emeritus at the University of Vermont and an adjunct professor at Cornell University. My area has been uh, mainly agricultural science, and I've dealt uh, mostly with that uh, through most of my professional career. But uh, I've also gotten involved in, uh, in writing about uh, the U.S. economy and, uh, and the various uh, uh, problems uh, that it has. So uh, my father was an economist, and so I, I got the economics uh, through him. And uh, you co-wrote uh, the book, The Great Financial Crisis, uh, Causes and Consequences, and you co-wrote that with John Bellamy Foster, correct? That's right. Okay. Yes, yes, that, that came out in January. And we are, uh, we are in a stew, and it doesn't seem that anybody has the proper recipe to cook our way out of this. Uh, we have now, uh, Mr. Chapman, I think you put uh, uh, what the Treasury and the Fed have done so far at, uh, what, 12, between uh, 12, 5, and $12.9 trillion. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we projected uh, 12 to 13 trillion six months ago. And everybody else is laughing at us, which they always do. That's what happens when you don't do your homework. Oh, yeah. And uh, just so you know, Mr. Magdoff, uh, this gentleman has spent time uh, inside the government. Mr. Chapman still won't tell me what he had the uh, top clearance for, uh, uh, but he worked for the United States government and spent 25 years on Wall Street. So he's seen this from the inside out, and he has been a regular on this program for, oh, better than two years. Uh, so just to let you know, is on the uh, field, the playing field with you. Now, Mr. Magdoff, uh, the issue here is we have a financial crisis, and uh, by briefly speaking with you today, uh, we are in a deep recession. You don't know that if it's, go if it's going to go into the depression worldwide, there is that possibility. But if you were to explain to our listeners how, in your particular uh, viewpoint, how we got into this position, if you would, sir. Well, uh, it's very difficult to summarize it, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I mean, I, I can summarize it, but in a short, <laughs> in a short statement. Uh, essentially, the U.S. economy after, or around 1980 or so, after the 70s, it, it went into a period of relatively slower growth. Um, and, uh, and during this period, uh, many different uh, trends in the economy, uh, if you will, changed uh direction or if they didn't change direction they became more intense or less intense and many changes in the u.s economy occurred but what happened was that that people were finding it more and more difficult i'm talking now capitalists people who had lots of money were finding it more and more difficult to to actually make a profit through making something and selling it or providing a service and selling the service it's not that that didn't happen but it was becoming more difficult to make money in that way. And so uh, people started to try uh, different ways to make money without doing that intermediary step mm -hmm. by actually making something or, or providing a service. And, uh, and this went hand in hand, and this, this stimulated the growth of the financial sector. Of course, the financial st sector stimulated the growth of, of this uh, phenomenon as well. Uh, where basically they came up with new ways or new gimmicks or new games or different uh, types of financial instruments, they call them, that you could place bets on. And uh, so that uh, this became an outlet for this tremendous amount of capital. So that was that's one aspect of it. Uh, another aspect is that during this process, and also stimulated by this growth of the financial sector of the economy, which just grew out of all proportion to the real economy, where you and I live and, and work every day and, and buy things and stuff like that, hand-in-hand um, uh, hand went the growth of debt. And this is not just consumer debt, although there's been a lot of talk about that, which increased from maybe like 10% of the, of the gross uh, domestic product back in the 1970s to, to 2007, it was 100%. In other words, it was, it was $13, $14 trillion, 100% of the gross domestic product. And financial debt also went up tremendously um, during that period of time, uh, from uh, from the next to nothing to uh, to uh, uh, to 
thirty percent, which is where it is now, something or was a year ago. Um, and so you had this tremendous amount of debt accumulating in all sectors of the economy, government, corporate, and uh, personal debt. And this is what was really driving the economy over these last uh, 15 or 20 years to, to a large extent. And it just couldn't go on forever. It didn't have to crash the way it's crashing, but there's just no way you can have more and more debt in the economy relative to the underlying economy, that is, and and have that grow. Uh, the total debt in the U.S. economy the last time I looked was somewhere between 350 and 375% of the GDP. 